Geopolitics and Empire is joined by Dr. Francis Boyle, who is international law professor at the University of Illinois. We'll be discussing the Wuhan coronavirus and biological warfare. He's served as counsel to numerous governments, such as Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Palestinian Authority. He's represented numerous national and international bodies in the areas of human rights, war crimes and genocide, nuclear policy and biowarfare. He's written numerous books, one of my favorites being Destroying Libya and World Order, which I assigned as mandatory reading material for my own students when I taught at the Monterey Institute of Technology. But most important for this interview, he's uh, written a book called Biowarfare and Terrorism and drafted the U.S. domestic implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention known as the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989 that was approved unanimously by both houses of the U.S. Congress and signed into law by President Bush. Uh, and thanks for joining us, Dr. Boyle. Well, thank you so much for having me on, and thanks for that kind introduction. Now, let's get to um, what's been uh, on the news recently, this uh, coronavirus uh, in Wuhan. There, there have been some uh, reports recently uh, there's a there's a really interesting website called Great Game India that has been reporting on this, um, and they've been talking about China, which they say has been uh, complying with biological weapons convention in recent years. But then there are some people uh, in the U.S. and experts that have been saying that in reality China uh, isn't complying with the weapons convention, and I think neither perhaps the the U.S. Uh, as well. Um, and you know, I, I'm I'm wondering. If China is uh, developing its own uh, biosafety level for uh, lab in in Wuhan and elsewhere, as you know, as a type of deterrence, uh, is, is it a, is it a type of a biological uh, arms race that we have going on? You told me in an email that you suspect China was developing the coronavirus as a dual use bio warfare weapons agent. And also, what do you make of reports that Chinese scientists have been stealing research and and viruses, including the coronavirus, from a Canadian biolab this past uh, December. Uh, and as well, Chinese nationals have been charged with smuggling vials of biological research to China from the U.S. Uh, with the aid of Charles Leiber, who was the chair of Harvard's chemistry department, and who also happened to be in 2011 a strategic scientist at Wuhan University. So can you tell us what, what's going on with this recent outbreak in Wuhan? Right. Well, that's a lot of questions. I guess we can take them one at a time. But uh, it, it, if you just do a very simple Google search on does China have a BSL-4 laboratory, Wuhan comes up right away. It, it's at the top of the list. That's all. The moment this type of thing happened, I began to, to do that. Um, and so a BSL-4 uh, is, is the most uh, serious type. And basically, uh, BSL-4 labs, we have many of them here in the United States, are used to develop offensive biological uh, warfare weapons with DNA uh, genetic engineering. So it does seem to me that the uh, Wuhan BSL-4 uh, is the source of the uh, coronavirus. Yes. And uh, my guess is that uh, they were researching uh, SARS uh, and they weaponized it further by giving it uh, gain, of gain of function uh, properties, which means it could be more lethal. And indeed, the uh, latest report now is it's 15% uh, fatality rate, which is more than uh, SARS at 83% infection rate. So a uh, typical gain of function, uh, it, it travels in the air. So it could reach out maybe six feet or more from someone uh, emitting a sneeze uh, or a cough. Uh, likewise, uh, this is uh, a specially designated uh, WHO research lab. So the WHO was in on it and they knew full well what was going on there. Yes, it's also been reported that Chinese scientists uh, stole coronavirus uh, materials from the Canadian lab at uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg uh, is Canada's foremost center for research, developing, testing biological warfare weapons. Uh, it's along the lines of uh, Fort Detrick uh, here in the United States of America. And yeah, I, I have three degrees from Harvard. Would not surprise me if uh, 
<laughs> something was being stolen out of Harvard uh, to to turn over to China. I, I read that report. I don't know what was in those vials one way or the other. But the bottom line is, uh, I my opinion is, uh, and I drafted the U.S. domestic implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention that was approved unanimously by both houses of the United States Congress, signed into law by President Bush Sr., that uh, it appears the uh, uh, coronavirus that we're dealing with here is an offensive biological warfare weapon that leaked out of that uh, Wuhan BSL-4. I'm not saying uh, it, it was done deliberately, but there have been previous reports of uh, problems with that lab and things leaking out of it. And I, I'm afraid that is uh, what we are dealing with today. And so can you give us, I mean, we'll be talking about the Wuhan and the, and the coronavirus in China, but can you give us kind of like a, like a bigger uh, context? Uh, I know you've previously in interviews said that since 9-11, you think that the U.S. has spent $100 billion on biological warfare uh, research. We know the Soviet Union, uh, if I'm not mistaken, developed uh, anthrax as a bioweapon. Um, and you've also mentioned that UK, France, uh, Israel, and, and China are all involved in biological warfare uh, weapons research. So, and I, something interesting, I believe one or two years ago, a Bulgarian journalist and the Russian government uh, shared their concern of the discovery of a US bioweapons lab in, in Georgia, in the country of Georgia. Uh, you've commented how in Africa, U.S. has set up uh, bioweapons labs uh, to work on uh, Ebola, which I think is illegal uh, under international law, but they were allowed somehow to, to put those uh, in, in Africa. So can you give us like a bigger picture of what's right. going on with these different countries and, and what's the purpose of, of this research? All these BSL-4 labs are by, you know, United States, Europe, Russia, China, uh, Israel, uh, are all there to research, develop, test uh, biological warfare agents. There's really no legitimate scientific uh, reason to have uh, BSL-4 labs. And uh, uh, that figure I gave 100 billion, that was about 2015, I believe. I had crunched the numbers uh, and came up with that figure, uh, the United States since 9-11. That, to give you an idea, that's uh, as much in constant dollars as the U.S. spent to develop uh, the Manhattan Project in the, in the atom bomb. So it's clearly all uh, weapons uh, related. We have well over 13,000 uh, 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 alleged, alleged life science scientists involved in research, develop, testing uh, biological weapons here uh, in the uh, United States. Um, and actually, this, this goes back. It even precedes... Uh, 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 9-11, uh, 2001. I have another book, The Future of International Law and American Foreign Policy, uh, tracing that all the way back to the uh, Reagan administration uh, under the influence of the uh, neocons. And they got very heavily involved in research, development, testing of biological weapons with uh, DNA genetic engineering. It was because of that that I, I issued my plea in 1985, in a, uh, a congressional briefing sponsored by the uh, Council for Responsible Genetics, I'm a lawyer for them, uh, they're headquartered in Cambridge, Mass. All the MIT, Harvard people uh, are involved in that, the principal ones. And then they asked me to draft that uh, implementing legislation. So the implementing legislation that I drafted was originally uh, uh, designed to stop this type of work death science work, I call it, by the United States government. <laughs> and then uh, after 9-11, 2001, it, it just completely accelerated. Uh, my current figure, that last figure, 100 billion, uh, I haven't had a chance to recrunch the numbers because I, I just started classes. But you have to in, add in about another 5 billion per year. So uh, basically, this is a uh, an offensive uh, biological weapons race by the United States government. And it's been, uh, and with its uh, assistance in Canada and Britain. And so other states, the world have responded accordingly. 
uh, including Russia and uh, and China. They were going to set up a whole series of BSL uh, four facilities uh, as well. And you you know Wuhan was the first, and it backfired on them. So, I mean, would you basically consider what happened in Wuhan just uh, boil it down to ineptitude or incompetence uh, on the Chinese part? Well, it's criminality. Uh, 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 it does appear they stole something there from uh, Winnipeg. Uh, this uh, activity that they engaged in uh, clearly violates the uh, Biological Weapons Convention. Uh, research development of uh, biological weapons these days is an international crime. I mean, the use of it would be. Um, and that was criminal. I'm not saying they you know, deliberately uh, inflicted this on their own people, but it leaked out of there. And all these uh, BSL-4 facilities leak. I mean, everyone knows that and studies this. So this was uh, a catastrophe waiting to happen. And uh, unfortunately, it, it happened. And the Chinese government under uh, Xi and his uh, comrades there have been covering this up from the get-go. The first reported case was December 1. So they've been sitting on this until they couldn't anymore. And everything uh, they're telling you is a lie. It's propaganda. The WHO still refuses to declare a uh, global health emergency. Its head Tedros was over there shaking hands with Xi and uh, smiling and yucking it up. The WHO is in on it. They've approved many of these uh, BSL-4 labs. They know exactly what's going on. And that is a WHO uh, research-approved laboratory. So they know what's going on, too. So you can't really believe anything the uh, WHO is telling you about this. Uh, either they're up to their eyeballs, in, it, in my opinion. I'd probably agree with you that um, this outbreak in Wuhan was, I mean, an accidental leak from the, the laboratory. But... Uh, it's just uh, just your thoughts. I mean, it's it's happening at quite an opportune uh, time because, namely, we're smack in the middle of a U.S.-China new Cold War, which is currently characterized by economic warfare, such as the you know the trade war, among other forms of hybrid and technological uh, warfare. And it seems the Wuhan outbreak will likely hit the Chinese economy uh, hard. The Chinese are flat out dismissing any idea that the U.S. Uh, is involved. And like I said, it's probably, you know, they made mistakes in the Wuhan lab. But I mean, what are your thoughts uh, if, of any seemingly, I mean, this would benefit uh, the, I, the U.S. Uh -huh. When the outbreak occurred, of course, I considered that alternative too. Um, you always have, you know, when you have an outbreak, you're never quite sure who or what is behind it. It certainly isn't bats. I mean, that's ridiculous. They they made the same argument on uh, Ebola in West Africa. I demolished that online. You can check it out. Um, so I kept uh, uh, competing theories about this. But right now, uh, uh, you know, when you originally contacted me, I said I wasn't prepared to comment because I was weighing the evidence. I'm a law professor and a lawyer. I try to do the best I can to weigh the evidence. But right now that... Uh, uh, Wuhan BSL-4, uh, in my opinion, is the most likely source. Apply Occam's razor, the simplest explanation. I'm not ruling out, you know, some type of sabotage, but but right now, I believe that is the source here. And you mentioned the the WHO, and I'd like to just get your thoughts on uh, the WHO and the big pharma. Um, you know, there's also some analysts who are downplaying. Uh, this news media hype uh, of the coronavirus. I mean, you've just said that it, it seems to be lethal. But, you know, if we go back a decade to the 2009 swine flu, um, which uh, I believe didn't have uh, too many casualties, but I think profited greatly the pharmaceutical companies. Um, and if I recall that back in 2009, many countries purchased great stocks uh, of the vaccines and they ended up not using, you know, anywhere from 50 to 80 percent uh, of the vaccine vaccines that they purchased. Uh, you've previously stated that, the, you know, the, the, uh, in an interview that the World Health Organization is a front for big pharma, if I'm not mistaken. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, also uh, agrees. And he says, you know, 50 percent of WHO funding comes from pharmaceutical companies and that the CDC itself is also severely compromised. So, um, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on the WHO, the CDC? Yeah, you, can't, you can't trust anything the WHO says because they're all bought and paid for by uh, big pharma 
And they're, when they work in cahoots with the CDC, which is the United States government, they work in cahoots with Fort Teacher. So you can't trust anything. However, the swine flu, and yes, I agree, Pharma made a lot of money, but that uh, uh, swine flu, uh, which I looked at, it, see, it did seem to me to be a, uh, a genetically uh, modified uh, biological warfare uh, weapon. It was a chimera of three different types of uh, genetic strains that someone put it together in a cocktail. Fortunately, uh, it, it, it was not as lethal as all of us feared. Uh, so fine. But as I said, this uh, figure I just gave to you was Saturday uh, from Lancet, which is a medical publication, saying it's a 15% fatality rate and an 83% uh, percent infection rate. So it's quite serious. Uh, I think far more serious than uh, uh, swine flu. As for big pharma, uh, sure, they're all trying to profit off this today as we speak. There was a big article yesterday uh, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, all big pharma trying to, you know, peddle whatever they can over there in China, even if it's worthless and won't help. We do know that, the, you know, if if you read the uh, mainstream news media, they say there there isn't a vaccine. Well, there is. Uh, it's the uh, uh, by the uh, Peerbright Institute uh, in uh, Britain uh, that's tied into their biological warfare program over there. They were behind the uh, hoof and mouth disease outbreak over there that wiped out their uh, cattle herd, uh, and it leaked out of there. So it was clear they were working on a hoof and mouth uh, uh, biological warfare uh, weapon. But the vaccine is there. Uh, I have the patent for it here. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read the patent. It's about 25 pages long, and, and my uh, 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 classes just resume. So eventually, I get some free time. I'll read the patent. But uh, you, you know, you can't patent a vaccine with the United States Patent Office, uh, uh, you know, unless the the science is there. Uh, so there is a vaccine. Everyone's lying about that. No one's pointing this out. Uh, there's a vaccine, but. Uh, uh, Instead, Big Pharma wants to make money, and the researchers say, well, it'll take three months, so we're racing for it. You know, everyone's going to make a buck off of this, that's for sure. But there is a vaccine. What they're telling I, I, I have the patent here. I have not. It's been patented by the United States government. So, uh, obviously, uh, I, I don't know exactly how workable it is, but, but it's a vaccine. Uh, I don't know why, why is it out there now. Uh, why isn't someone saying there is a vaccine? Perhaps uh, political leaders have already been vaccinated, for all I know. Uh, I really don't know. But there is a vaccine. Peerbright is uh, uh, well known there in Britain, and it's tied into Fort Detrick. And CDC is tied into Fort Detrick, too. So they all know there's a, pat there's, there's a patented uh, vaccine. And just to get uh, your comment on, I mean, something to, to uh, related to this, which was my next uh, que uh, question. So I think I'm not sure if it's that same institute that you just men uh, mentioned that has the patent. But I read somewhere that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, maybe funds or has some connection to that institute uh, that has the I patent. Think on that too. Yeah. And, you know, the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, uh, information, they they uh, uh, fund. Uh, this type of uh, DNA genetically engineered uh, uh, biological warfare work. That's correct. So you can't trust anything they're telling you that that somehow they're out there trying to make the world a better place. I mean, we have you know Bill Gates publicly admitting the world would be a better place if there were a lot less people. So uh, uh, you know that they're uh, uh, the uh, Bill Melinda Gates uh, Foundation. Uh, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh, and, and they are funding this type of stuff, sure. Well, and, and just your comment, there was the also the report that um, I guess it was a consortium of, of, of companies, uh, which included the Gates Foundation, that back in just two, three months ago, in October of 2019, they held a pandemic exercise simulating an outbreak. I mean, what are the chances specifically of a coronavirus? And I mean, I, I, I don't know if you, it was called Event 201. People can find uh, this online, online, and they gave a list of seven recommendations for for governments and international organizations to take. I mean, that's I also find that kind of interesting how they had this simulation. That's correct. It's, it's you know raises that question, you know, the origins of what happened here, 
But right now, I'm just looking at the evidence I have and applying Occam's razor. And we know that Wuhan BSL-4 was research developing, testing uh, SARS uh, as a biological warfare agent. So it could have been they gave it this DNA uh, uh, genetic engineering enhanced uh, uh, properties, uh, uh, gain of function, uh, which we do here in the West, in the United States all the time. We have uh, all sorts of research that is clearly uh, biowarfare uh, research that has been uh, approved by the National Institutes of Health. It's a joke. They know full well uh, they are approving offensive biological warfare uh, research. And it gets funded by the United States government. Yeah. And you've also mentioned uh, in the email uh, to me that, you know, what happened in the biosafety lo uh, lab uh, level four in Wuhan calls into question the, the safety of all uh, of these level three and level four labs uh, around the world. But b aside from... You They're know. completely unsafe. BSL-3 and BSL-4 labs are only designed for research, development, testing of offensive biological warfare agents. They have, in my opinion, they serve no legitimate purpose at all. They should all be shut down, every one of them. Uh, and, and, you know, even assuming, you know, that, the, 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 you know, they're, the, simply they're too dangerous. If you want, there's a excellent uh, documentary uh, uh, called uh, Anthrax Wars by Nadler and Cohn. And I'm in there repeatedly. And at the end, I say, with respect to these labs, three and four, this is a catastrophe waiting to happen. Well, I'm afraid the catastrophe has now happened. So there it is. Yeah, I was just watching that uh, documentary uh, before we connected. And I recommend uh, listeners go check that out. Um, do you see uh, in the future any countries, you know, if we, if we come to a conflict between U.S., uh, EU, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Iran, China, Russia, you, I mean, you name it, do you ever do you see any of these countries actually utilizing um, these biological weapons in, in I mean, it's, it's illegal uh, under international law, but we know like in the past that international law isn't followed. Do, do you think that there's a real danger of this escalating? For sure. That's that's the only reason they develop these uh, biological weapons is uh, eventually to to be used. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's like the Manhattan Project. You know, we, we put uh, all that money into uh, developing an atom bomb. And even though it was not needed to end World War II, they still nuked uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, uh, yes, I, I think that's correct. And also, uh, these can be used covertly. You know, anytime you see a uh, uh, unexplained uh, uh, sudden outbreak of uh, a disease like this anywhere in the world, both for uh, 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 human beings or, and or animals, I always suspect the biowarfare agent uh, is at work, uh, and I monitor the situation like I did at Wuhan uh, until I can reach a conclusion. Uh, so, yes, they they can be used. Uh, and as uh, you know, as for the United States government uh, today, they are fully prepared, armed, equipped, supplied uh, to wage uh, biological warfare with anthrax. These other more exotic. Uh, 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 things I don't know, but but they have the weapons. They're stockpiled, and we have to understand. Uh, if you read uh, Seymour Martin Hirsch's uh, book, published about 1968, he won the Pulitzer Prize for *Me Lie*. He had the whole uh, offensive U.S. biological warfare industry in there back before it was illegal, okay, and criminal. And basically, after 9-11-2001, that entire uh, industry, offensive biological warfare industry, has been reconstituted here in the United States with all these BSL-4, BSL-3 labs, well over 13,000 uh, alleged scientists, sort of like Dr. Mengele, uh, working on these things. Um, and so other, other countries have responded in kind, like Russia, like China. Uh, yes. France is involved, Britain's involved, sure. And, I mean, you mentioned uh, covert use. I just wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, in the last few years, there was the 
the Russian double agent spy, um, Sergei, um, I forget it, Skripal, uh, who had been allegedly poisoned with uh, Novichok uh, out in, in Britain. And it just, I thought it was funny. It just so happened where he was allegedly poisoned. He was right near Porton Down, uh, I guess the British uh, bio weapons lab, I guess the world's first bio weapons lab that was created in 1916. I mean, I, I don't know if you have thoughts on that whole incident. Right. Well, yeah, I was right down the street from Porton Down. So, uh, uh, you know, applying Occam's razor, who do you think might have been behind this? And it was not a nerve agent. A nerve agent would have killed him immediately, this, this Novichok. Uh, it, it, yeah, it was something else like uh, 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 DX or something like that. So fine. But, uh, that, you know, I, I would just say that I don't think that was a coincidence. But, you know. There you go. There, the, obviously, there's a lot of speculation on that. Um, and something else that's kind of, kind of interesting, you know, you've written in Biowarfare uh, and Terrorism, uh, your book, and there's also Graham McQueen, I think your colleague, who wrote The Anthrax Deception, the case for domestic right. uh, conspiracy. I with everything he said in there, that's correct. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering also if, you know, th this new war for biotechnological dominance, whatever you want to call it, uh, if it can also be used kind of as a, as a pretext for the centralization of political power and the initiation of, of wars uh, like uh, I guess it did in the 2003 Iraq war. I mean, is this another danger that we get these events like now this coronavirus and then governments will call for uh, central, centralization of greater power and taking away some of our civil liberties? Sure. If you look at the uh, uh, October 2001 uh, anthrax attacks here in the United States, uh, that was clearly by uh, uh, elements of the uh, United States government that was behind that. That was uh, super weapons grade uh, anthrax with uh, uh, a trillion spores per gram, and it floated in the air. So only a, a very sophisticated biological weapons uh, lab like Fort Detrick could produce that. And they used the, uh, uh, that anthrax attack, uh, uh, including on, on Congress, to ram through the USA Patriot Act, uh, which basically turned the United States into a police state, which is what we have now. So, yeah, and you have to understand uh, the Pentagon, Fort Detrick, maybe Dugway Grooving Ground still has a uh, stockpile of that super weapons grade uh, anthrax that, that we saw uh, in October uh, 2001 that they can use the next time they want to uh, do something like that to further develop the uh, American police state, right? Is there anything else um, you feel important to mention uh, regarding this Wuhan coronavirus uh, outbreak or biological warfare or, or any other thoughts uh, you'd like to leave us with? Well, you, you just can't believe anything the Chinese government, the WHO, uh, the CDC are telling you. They're all lying because, you know, they, they know what's going on here. Um, and so you're going to have to, you know, figure it out as best as you can. Uh, but in my opinion, as of this time, and I'm, I'm fully prepared to consider further evidence on this, it does seem to me that this was uh, a DNA genetically engineered biological warfare agent leaking out of Wuhan that has gain of function properties, which can make it more lethal. Uh, I think they're probably uh, 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 doing something with SARS to make it more lethal and more uh, infectious. And so for that reason, uh, you have to take extreme precautions. And, and the, they're now finally admitted, well, yeah, <laughs> anyone within six feet can be infected, whereas with SARS, it was about two feet. Well, that's gang of function right there. Uh, and that, that should be a tip off. So uh, I guess you're going to have to uh, protect yourself. Uh, Lori Garrett, uh, had a pretty good uh, essay in uh, foreign policy yesterday, and uh, she was over there uh, uh, covering the um, uh, SARS, and she has very good advice in there, except that she took the SARS figure of two to three feet and said, well, you got to stay two to, two to three. 
I, I think you got to stay at least six feet away because this is gain of function. It, it can flow through the air and infect you. And it, it can get you in the eyes, um, uh, any orifice, the mouth, maybe the ears. Uh, we're not sure at this point. Yeah, I'm here uh, on the border uh, of China with, uh, in Kazakhstan, and I was just reading yesterday, today, that uh, they're no longer allowing Chinese uh, citizens into Kazakhstan, I think, without a, uh, a medical, like a paper, a medical check to, to get the, their visas to enter most, Kazakhstan. Most medical checks are worthless because, uh, you know, this is just public relations by all the governments involved because there is a 14-day incubation period where people can still be infected. So someone could walk right through a medical inspection and pass it, uh, get into your country, and then they, they come down with the uh, uh, coronavirus. So that's all public relations, in my opinion, by governments, and they know it. And they're just sending people out there with temperatures and things like that. It's not like SARS. This is more dangerous than SARS. As I said, I, I think that Wuhan lab, we know they had SARS in there that they were dealing with, and I think they uh, enhanced it. And I, I'm afraid, you know, that's what we're dealing with. But, you know, I'm keeping an open mind as to what other sources it might have. And I wasn't prepared to say anything until, you know, that Wuhan lab, that Wuhan lab is right there and it, it's dealing with coronavirus. So, again, apply Occam's razor. It seems to me that's the simplest explanation here. I guess my one of my final questions would be, uh, you know, in the months ahead, you know, apart, as you say, staying six feet away from people, uh, I've, I've read, you know, taking high doses of vitamin C and other things like this can, can help you. But uh, if they come out, you know, as the situation develops, if it gets if it gets worse uh, and they come out with a coronavirus um, vaccine, would you what do you think should would should people take it or not? What are your thoughts? Well, what I would say is this right now, if, if you look at the article in the Wall Street Journal, Big Pharma is trying to sell all sorts of, they're, they're taking all their drugs off the shelf and say, well, let's see if it works, you know, which is preposterous, okay? Um, the scientists are saying, well, we can get you a vaccine, you know, maybe two to three months, but they're not tested. So what we do know, however, is that Purebright vaccine has been patented. So all I can assume is that that might work. Uh, but I don't think I'd be taking any of these other vaccines. No, you have no idea what's in there. You, you'll be the guinea pig uh, 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 for big pharma. And, you know, everyone's figures they're going to make a lot of money here. So I, I'll keep my eye open but uh, uh, on this and, and how it developed. Uh, but I wouldn't trust anything they're trying to sell right now. They're just pulling these things off the shelf. And, you know, if they do come so up with something two to three months, even that's not going to be tested, uh, it, you know, in accordance with normal uh, scientific protocol. So it's going to be a, a crapshoot uh, it, 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 if it's going to help you. And indeed, it, it might not help you because they're, they're, they'll be using for this uh, these vaccines, these uh, 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 DNA genetic uh, uh, engineered vaccines, they'll be using live coronavirus probably, and sticking it in there and giving you some live coronavirus uh, on the theory you'll develop an immunity. That's, that's the way a lot of these vaccines work out. Uh, that, that, you know, that's what happened with the uh, Ebola vaccine that created the uh, uh, Ebola pandemic there in uh, West Africa. They, <laughs> they were uh, testing out a vaccine on poor black Africans, as usual. And they were, uh, this vaccine uh, had live Ebola in it. So it gave them live Ebola. <clears throat> so I, again, I'd be uh, uh, very careful, even if they do come up with these vaccines two to three months from now, very careful. Why would you want to uh, inject the uh, live coronavirus into you? All right. Um, I don't believe you have a strong online presence how can people best follow your work i suppose to search for interviews as well as get your books well uh basically i'm blackballed uh and blacklisted off all the uh, mainstream news media here on purpose uh, I, as far as i can figure out the u.s government gave an order that i should not be 
interviewed by anyone. So I'm not. Uh, so I guess you could just put my name in there under uh, Google, a Google alert, and some interviews might come up. But what happened was at, right after the anthrax attacks of 9-11-2001, uh, uh, I was giving a, a lecture out at Harvard by Alma Mater. Uh, and uh, uh, to, I was running a panel on biological warfare for the Council for Responsible Genetics. I'm their lawyer. And it was at Harvard Divinity School. And as I was going in, there was a Fox camera crew there from Boston. And I said, it looks to me like this, this has come out of the U.S. government's lab. Uh, 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 and we know they do research and health testing on anthrax. Then I said the same thing there at Harvard. Then I gave an interview to um, a radio station in Washington, D.C. Then I gave an interview on that to the BBC. So the whole world saw it. And at that point, I was completely cut off. And I've been cut off uh, ever since. So uh, you're probably not going to hear too many uh, interviews uh, uh, from me here. As for my book, uh, Bio Warfare and Terrorism, you, you know, you can just get it at Amazon.com. Uh, that picks up the story pretty much from 9-11-2001 uh, until it went to press. And then there are interviews I've given to an investigative reporter, Sherwood Ross, S-H-E-R-W-O-O-D, Ross. And a big one I just sent you might want to put on your web page that was pretty uh, comprehensive. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I read that as well. I'll, I'll include the, the link in the description of this interview so people can go check that out. Um, and yeah, you're not the only academic. I, I, I know others and have heard of others that similar things have happened. And that's just, I guess, the price uh, we, we, you we pay for telling um, the truth. And so, again, for listeners, if, if people want to have a broader context and deeper understanding uh, of, of what's happening today, especially with biological warfare, as well as U.S. foreign policy and international affairs, you know, I, I urge you to get Dr. Francis Boyle's books uh, and listen to his interviews, uh, as well as uh, his colleague's book, um, Grand McQueen, uh, The Anthrax Deception, The Case for a Domestic Conspiracy. Uh, and thank you for being with us, uh, Dr. Boyle. Well, thank you. And again, please understand, these are my current opinions. Uh, uh, I could change my, my opinion here based on more evidence. So uh, I'm just looking at the evidence out there as I see it. And, and you have to understand there is so much disinformation, lies, and propaganda that, that it's kind of very difficult to um, distinguish truth from fact. I, I'm doing the best job I can here. I hope you enjoyed this Geopolitics and Empire podcast and interview. I would like to remind you that our website is geopoliticsandempire.com, and you can sign up for our mailing list that goes out each weekend with the latest podcast and a long collection of important news headlines. It's good to sign up for the newsletter in case we experience censorship and deplatforming. You can help the Geopolitics and Empire podcast by subscribing to and interacting with all of our channels such as YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Gab, Minds, and Steemit. You can also help us by leaving a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform such as iTunes, CastBox, Stitcher, Spreaker, and so on. Finally, if you value our work and our mission and would like to see us continue interviewing experts from across the political spectrum, please consider leaving a one-time donation via PayPal or Bitcoin or becoming a regular monthly supporter on our Patreon. All the links can be found on geopoliticsandempire.com. Thanks for listening.